Hello everybody, how's it going? Welcome to my review of Black Clover episode 164. And we're a little over five episodes away from the finale of Black Clover, the anime. And before then, until then, we don't really know what the future holds. It's really up in the air with the anime. The, this arc is still ongoing in the manga right now. So it's going to be very interesting to see how the anime ties up with if the arc actually wraps up within the next five chapters or if it's still going to be ongoing if the anime ends before the arc does and we have to wait who knows how long but it's going to be very interesting one thing is definitely clear is like the pacing of the fights and i don't know if it was structured that way in the manga i said this before but the fights are super quick super quick we got two fights in this episode last episode we actually got luck taking down a dark disciple actually that was great too and by default, we actually got three battles, although technically I don't count the fight with Gaja and the Dark Disciple because that was pretty much a wash and it was off screen anyway. But we actually got two major fights in this episode. And on top of that, we actually got the plot point of why the Dark Triad are out looking for the arcane stage level wizards here. So that was pretty, that was pretty big. That's actually the biggest point of the episode. But to me, just as important was the actual focus on the side characters. And I said this ever since the arc started, we need to see this. And the handling of the side characters is one of Black Clover's strong suits, especially with the female cast. And if you look at the preview, it looks like we, we already know the female cast is already set but when it comes to like how they're portrayed other than Shonen, other Shonen out there. So that's pretty cool. Also, if you look at the preview, it looks like we're going to have a major fight between two, a bunch of girls. Also, we actually got Charmy versus Halbert. So that was pretty cool. So like I said, the, the handling of the female cast is, is in pretty much good hands here when it comes to Black Clover, when it comes to Tabata. So that's awesome to see. So we actually start off with after Yami. And I have to say, the attack last episode, the animation was great, but the attack landed by Yami... The dimension slash on Dante was epic, but even with that, it, I have to say even the light, the lighting and the, the effects was great. So the dimension slash, they really highlighted just how strong Yami's gotten. But considering Dante isn't using his four hundred percent demon devil abilities yet, and considering the fact he just regenerated, it's not over. First off, um, speaking of which, we actually see Asta come in. Before it, before his devil, he's, and the devil's like, K kill, just kill. But Asta can't, Asta can't move, so he's pretty much immune, immobile at this point. But Yami's the target of Dante, so Dante regenerates, and then he brings up why they're so interested in Yami and Vanjic is because they're looking to, they're looking to connect the not the human world and the underworld. You wait and they're trying to grow a tree of clip off which I find very funny because Dante having a plot point about a tree of clip off I think that's actually what the tree is called in Devil May Cry 5 so I think that's pretty funny so uh, I, I mean you can call, call that a coincidence if you want but, but the main point is they need this tree to open up the underworld you know, they open up a way for the underworld to connect with the human world once that happens it's just going to be filled with devils so it's going to Bad sight. It's gonna be filled with malice. It still doesn't. Dante wants this. Or we did get a glimpse of what looks to be his past, where he's just like killing people and just like he calls the world human world boring, the normal world boring. So that so maybe we'll get to learn more, especially with characters like Wanaka and Zenon. We we'll have to learn more about them too. And speaking of which, we actually get do get. It looks like we're gonna learn a little bit more next episode. But I also found it very interesting during the flashback. If you look very closely like Dante kind of resembles Kira the scale magic user and we know Kira has somewhat of a role in this arc he has an interest in this because of Asta because he's because he's the one literally he's gonna like execute Asta he's gonna convict Asta with his scales and like like place him under execution if he doesn't get the job done with the devil so I find that very interesting again last time I said there was a look-alike of somebody I got it wrong but I'm just going to throw that out there. More importantly, Yami hears about this. So he's like, okay, I, I, I need to take you out because this is bad. Also, I do want to point out 
like with the handling and the focus of the side characters was great. That was great to see in this episode. We got to see Luck with his upgrade, take out that disciple. We also, by default, also got we also got Grey getting a moment where she actually saves Doge, and we actually come to find out there's actually a history between the two before they joined the Black Balls. So that's pretty cool. But it just shows that yeah, the spotlight of the side characters. And this is where we get the one of the dark disciples that are attacking the forest, the bird in the forest. And we actually see it's Halbert Chavol that's attacking, and she's the one that goes up against Charming. We also find out that Petrov, the the spirit guardians, they've been taken out, like, with the exception of Garja. The, the dark disciples. These are the dark disciples, not the dark members of the dark tribe. We Lord only knows what Veronica's capable of. But this pisses, this triggers Charmy because the food and the villages are, are pretty much well. The the food's destroyed. The villages are pretty much in a bad in bad shape. So Charmy decides to go and like, yo, I'm not gonna let you go away with this. And we actually get the introduction that goes up against it, which is like I said, the, the female cast is hand, handling is great. The way this is just the way this the, the, to this play, just how broken Charmy is when she gets serious, but. I do like how Halbert was using using her hair as a weapon. That was pretty cool. So Charmy brings up a sheep, and the 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 two clash, and it's like actually a defensive battle at first because while well, you have the sheep trying to punch, and this is pretty much a stalemate until she re, uh, reveals like her her hair actually protects her while she like Charmy's sheep can't protect her at all. So she, Halbert uses this as opportunity the opportunity to attack her, and she slashes her. So that was, so that that looked pretty bad. I have to say I like a design, but her personality sucked because she, she because she's beautiful. She view, she views she can just do whatever she wants. It's a shame that her magic personality doesn't match her beauty, but it usually comes back to bite you in the ass. And so does her hair, honestly. So, Charmy actually gets serious because obviously, shut the hell up. You're not gonna get away with this. She goes into a young adult form. So that's what. That's always great to see. We haven't seen that since the Alpha Reincarnation arc. And then after that, it's pretty much GG. But I do like how, even with the sheep transforming, we're going to have to prepare a new strategy. We're going to have to cook her instead of attacking her. Because she's able to dodge the knife and fork attack. But then Charmy uses a giant bottle of pepper. It looks like a bottle of pepper to black blind her. Even though that's wacky, it's still pretty. It's a pretty smart move. And actually, it's a trope of eyesight being a focus in these two fights in this episode. Allows Charmy to come in, and I love how she just prepares Shafal's hair like like it, she's mixing up a stir fry. You see the pan and everything, so it's like oh, Halbert's getting terrified because she's not Charmy's not even a devil, but yet she's using magic that's like out of this world, which she really is. She's like I said, this episode was displays just how broken she is when she gets serious. So that's always great to see. But she comes in with the attack. By the way, the way she comes in, that it, like the shading was great. She comes in with like Luffy with the Gamma Gun no, Gatling, or like she was Jotaro from jo jo JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Like instead of like being like Jotaro, like or, 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 she's like la 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 la, la and she's attacking. So she she gets dealt with. And I like how Petrov is like, what kind of a monster have I woken here? So yeah, no time to celebrate because it switches over to literally to. Another Dark Disciple taking on another trainee from the Clover Kingdom that was with the Heart Kingdom. And that's Leo. Leo, what we see in this fight, has already got started because Leo's been taking damage up the ass because we actually find out the, the other Dark Disciple, Sephora Snile, who's able to read his opponent's moves by, by using multiple eyes. It kind of reminds me of Gara, even though Gara only uses the one eye from Naruto. But... Snail uses multiple eyes to predict his opponent's moves, so it's they're all over the place. So Leo can't get a break in. He's getting tagged up, up all over the place, and he's also while these eyes are locked onto his opponent, he's using he's using these shells, these bullets made with mana to actually attack. So I thought that's actually pretty cool. This actually was a this is actually a better fight because it actually had more strategy involved, as opposed to like Chami just going in full. Full force, just like attacking. Even though it was great to see, I like fights that have strategy involved. So he actually used the eyesight as a, a, a 
Snow was keeping his eyes on Leo, not knowing what he was up to. So he's able to put a giant array underneath him without him knowing. So he could launch a counter attack. And boy, that was a huge counter attack. That that array was massive. So Snow couldn't get away. He got his face burnt, which actually gave away his position because he was screaming like a bitch. And then in comes Leo's like, oh, if you don't want to get hurt, you should be in the battlefield. So that was great. So Leo takes care of that Dark Disciple. Like I said, Garja already took care of a Dark Disciple off screen. And then it cuts to the end. We see Laura Pika actually surveying in on the Dark Disciples being taken care of. But there's a Dark Disciple actually storms into the to the place where Noel and Mimosa and Leo, Laura Pika and Undine are. And it's actually the underleg that was actually infatuated with being stepped on by Bonica, which actually ties into the end of the episode. But I, I like how it's not no Noelle or Laura Pika, it's actually Mimosa that takes care of her. So, like, oh, we will prepare her for you. Mimosa comes in with a sunflower, knocks him out. That was pretty cool. Like, and she's the one that says, oh, you're pretty vile, disgusting, which is something that Bonica which said the last time we saw him. Like, oh, you're gross. So then speak of the devil, literally, here comes Vanica, and then that, and it's like, oh, Laura Pika, how have you been? I'm, I'm here for you. And that's how the episode ends. And judging judge from the dialogue of the preview, it looks like Laura Pika and Vanica have a connection. So that's going to be interesting to see. It also looks like Laura Pika is actually going to fight Vanica because if you look closely, she's in a, she's like dressed up as, as a queen. So I, if that's, that's the case, I've already said like Laura Pika, I like her personality. So I kind of want, want to see what she could do. In a fight, so that's pretty cool. We saw a glimpse of it against Asta and, and Nero, but here this is going to be a full major major fight, so I can't wait to see that. We know Noel versus Vanica is a lock, but that would be kind of cool to see Laura Pika in a fight. So this episode was great because of the focus on the side characters, and we get to learn finally what the re real agenda is of the Dark Triad. Kind of makes me wonder why Vanica and Zenon, what kind of messed up upbringings they had in order to go go along with this but it doesn't matter we'll have to we'll find out pretty soon that's gonna do it for today guys thank you so much for watching like the review if you did hit the thumbs up i appreciate that subscribe to our for black clover catch you guys later thanks guys bye